Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. In this video, uh, we're going to install redundant AC power outlets with isolated grounding for our equipment rack. Also in this video, I show a basic wiring diagram of, of what I'm doing and, and recorded video of me, wire, wi of me wiring the isolated grounding outlets. However, since there was nothing special done in the breaker panel for the isolated grounding circuits, uh, I, I, did not want, I did not record the wiring of the breaker panel. And, and the reason why is because mains power will kill you. If you do not know the correct way to wire a breaker panel, please, please call someone that does. Okay, enough of that. Let's have some fun. So, why the power upgrade? Well, the upgrade is needed because the addition of our two 3845 routers we installed in video number 62 increases the load the equipment rack pulls on the 20 amp circuit that is feeding all of the wall outlets here in the lab. How much of an increase? Well, according to the Cisco 3845 specification, each router needs about four amps, and that's running amps, and, and I'm assuming that's the maximum running current it's gonna pull. Um, except, at startup, when the routers will spike to 50 amps, all right? So, with just the three Cisco 4840, with, the, with just the three Cisco 3845s we have, uh, that can add up to a 12 amp load on the lab circuit. And that's not including the five amps the uh, Juniper can draw and the, and the power draws of our Ethernet switches or uh, Xena Compact test set. So the two new redundant AC circuits will provide 40 amps of current dedicated to the equipment rack. Taking a look at the wiring diagram for our new circuits, we're going to have two IGs, isolated ground, 20 amp outlets and metal EMT boxes for our equipment rack. Each outlet will have its own circuit and 20 amp breaker. Since the ground screw on the IG outlet is not connected to the mounting strap and we have to ground the metal box, we must use a separate wire to ground our metal boxes. We could just add a wire from the IG outlet ground terminal to the metal box, but that would defeat the purpose of the IG outlet. So, we have to run the grounds from the metal boxes over to our equipment rack. What's the purpose of isolated grounds? The simplest answer I've seen is on Wikipedia. It says, the primary reason for the use of isolated grounds is to provide a noise-free ground return separate from the equipment ground return. If you're wondering how the equipment ground is separate from the power supply ground, check out video number 42, where I talk about the Juniper's power supplies floating. Okay, so let's get started. To start, I'm installing the 3 8 inch flex adapters on the metal outlet boxes. The flex adapters serve two purposes. First, it clamps the wires and prevents them from pulling out of the metal boxes. And second, it protects the wires from being cut by the sharp edges of the metal box knockouts. Now, I'm mounting the metal boxes to the lab wall using two wood screws. Since I need to run two circuits to the breaker panel and only have one roll of Romex wire, I need to pull out enough Romex for one of the runs so I can pull both cables at the same time. Looking around, I'm thinking about the route I want to use over the ladder rack. 
I start by pulling a wire from the roll of Romex. Once I pull enough Romex from the Romex roll, I grab the wire I just cut off and pull it too. Then I take some electrical tape and tape the cut wire to the roll wire so I can pull both through the rack at the same time. Now I'm just going to pull both wires through the ladder rack until I get to the breaker panel. The Romex wire is 12 gauge two conductor with ground that I picked up from our local hardware store. Notice that I pull several feet of wire past the bottom of the breaker panel. This is to ensure I have enough wire in the breaker panel to neatly route the wires inside the panel. Remember, it's better to have some wasted wire than trying to stretch a wire that's too short. Boy, that's a greenhorn mistake. Now that the wires are pulled, I'm gonna start tying the wires to the ladder rack using zip ties. Zip ties are great, but can have a couple downfalls. First, the end of the zip tie that is cut is sharp as a knife and will slice your arm open if you scrape against it. Second, I've been told you can make the zip ties too tight and damage or break the conductors in the cable. That's why a lot of telecom folks still use wax string to fasten cables. Once the wires along the main run are tied down, I can cut the wires to make it easier to route them to the metal boxes. Now I'm inserting the Romex in the metal boxes through the flex adapters and making sure the Romex is flat with the adapter so it doesn't pinch the wires. Before clamping the Romex, we need to add our metal box ground wires that will run to the equipment rack. Now that all our wires are in place, we can tighten the flex adapter clamps. Once I figure out which is the best route for the ground wires, I start tying them in place. We need to install a new ground block to the equipment rack for our new ground wires. I'm, re I'm removing an old brace on the rack to make room for the new ground block. Now that our new ground block is installed, I can install the ground wires. I see that one of the ground wires doesn't look nice and neat. So I'm loosening the flex adapter clamp and making a few adjustments. Now that all the wires are in place and clamped down, I'm moving the Romex wires out of my way so I can install the metal box ground wires. I unscrew one of the box mounting screws where I will fasten the ground wire. I strip about one inch of insulation off the wire and create a loop in a clockwise direction with my wire cutters. I use a brass flat washer on the wood screw to help hold the loop firmly against the metal box. Now 
Now that the metal box ground wires are installed, I do some cable tie cleanup. I'm using a box cutter to cut a strip in the Romex wire cover. Notice I only cut a couple inches of the Romex cover, then just rip the cover the rest of the way by hand. You do not want to try and cut the cover from the top of the wire, or you may damage the insulators covering the wires and create a short. Now that the Romex cover is trimmed and the wires are cut to length, we can install our outlets. Make sure all the unused conductor screws on the outlets are tight and not flapping around. Since the ground conductor in our Romex is not insulated, I add a piece of shrink wrap to prevent the isolated ground wire from making contact with our metal box when I install the outlet. The outlets have a trim gauge on the back to show you how much insulation to remove from the wires for installation in the outlet's terminal clamps. Now that the outlets are mounted and look good, we can install the face plates. Thumbs up! I'm installing the 19 inch to 23 inch rack extensions on our new CyberPower PDUs to make them easier to mount. Mounting the PDUs in the rack, I need to move the 3D printer power supply and a couple of cables. One thing I notice is the screw holes in the rack are not lining up, so I can put screws in the top and bottom of our extension brackets to hold it a little better. After a bit of fiddling, I decide to just use the two top screw holes in the extension brackets so I can mount the PDUs at the top of the rack. Now that the PDUs are mounted, I have to figure out where to put the 15 feet of power cord that they came with. After a bit of messing around, I decide to just hang them from the cable rack and try to make them as neat as possible. Well, that's it. I did a little cable management on the rack that I didn't want to bore you with. So let's take a quick look and see how it turned out. Notice I've also labeled our new outlets to match the PDUs and breaker panel labels. Zooming into our PDUs, we can power them up and check the status LEDs.
The power LED and ground LED are both lit and the surge LED is off, which means we have power and our ground is good and the PDU is happy. Excellent. So is the IG circuit going to improve our equipment's performance? Uh, my answer is, well, maybe, but probably not. Why? Because the 3845 power supply ground is tied to the chassis ground. So all the noise coming from the equipment rack, coming from the equipment rack is going to be fed right into the 3845 chassis and transmitted right back on, onto our new isolated grounds. Um, I could fix this issue by putting the uh, routers on a shelf with a rubber mat, but I won't unless we start having grounding noise issues. So, so if, uh, if you're scratching your head wondering why I even bothered with the IG circuits, well, we needed to add more power to the equipment rack, right? So since we are running new circuits anyway, it's just easier to put all the IG, to put all the IG pieces in place uh, during our power upgrade. Also, it only cost a few extra bucks for the parts and only added about 15 minutes to our install time. So, there you have it. <laughs> I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a big thumbs up. That always helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the, post them in the comments under the video, and I'll try to answer them the best I can, and I'll see you later.